I was born July the 16th, 1909, in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, my father owned a saloon, which he operated in St. Joseph, Missouri at that time. My mother was a housewife. My grandfather, Penning, was born in Beaver, B-I-W-E-R, Luxembourg. Reference is made to the family tree which you were, with which you were previously supplied. My grandmother, Penning, was born in uh, Ohio, I believe. Her parents came from Trier, T-R-I-E-R, -E Germany. My maternal grandfather was named George Howard, and he was my grandmother's uh, second husband. He was already deceased at the time that I was born. Only one half-brother who uh, was named George McKnight. He later changed his name to George Knight, K-N-I-G-H-T. I believe he is now dead. I do not. I lost, I do not know just when he died. Both of my grandfathers uh, died before I was born. My grandfather, Penning, died as a result of a natural gas explosion. And my grandfather, Howard, died uh, of cancer of the pancreas just before my father and mother were married. My father and mother uh, had three children. The first child, Frank, was born in 1902. I was born in 1909, and the third child, my sister Eleanor Rupert, was born in Dallas, South Dakota, in 1912. There were other children in my mother's family, but they all died in, in infancy. My father was the youngest of six children, and they all lived in or about St. Joseph, Missouri, or Leavenworth, Kansas. That may be incorrect. I can only account for five in my father's family, so that either there was one died in, in infancy or I am incorrect. The oldest uh, was my Aunt Mary, who married Louis Deitch, D-I-E-T-S-C-H, uh, who was my godfather and uh, from whom I have my middle name. My Uncle Matt was the oldest boy. That's spelled M A W T H E W. Correction, uh, it was the name was Mathias. But he always was known as Uncle Matt. Bernadine was an, uh, an unmarried uh, aunt who was known as Aunt Dina, D E N A. And uh, she is also deceased. They are all deceased at the, at the present time. Aunt Dina worked as a housekeeper for a priest in uh, Atch Atchison, Kansas, I believe. My paternal grandparents were uh, living in uh, Leavenworth, Kansas. At the time, my grandfather died and my grandmother then went to live with Aunt Mary Deitch. There she remained until she died in 1928. My father lost his saloon uh, due to politics somewhere around 1910, and he then moved to uh, South Dakota where he 
briefly worked in the gold, the Homestead gold mine at Leed, South Dakota, and then uh, went back to bartending in Deadwood, South Dakota. Later they moved to Dallas, South Dakota, where my sister Eleanor Rupert was born. From there, my father uh, and mother moved to Beaver, Nebraska, where my father had another job as a bartender. He continued tending bar until uh, Prohibition arrived, and then he went to work for the uh, town mill and light plant. The move to Beaver was about 1914, as uh, I recall the newspaper headlines uh, about the First World War. And I entered kindergarten in Beamer that same year. We lived in three different houses in Beamer, uh, the longest period being uh, when we lived in a house behind the Catholic Church. And during that time, my father served as the sexton, taking care of the furnace at the church and ringing the, the church bell, etc. We stayed in Beamer until after I graduated from Beamer High School. The family stayed in Beamer until uh, 1928, at which time they followed me to Lincoln, Nebraska, where I had moved uh, in 1927 in order to uh, go to the university. When I was in the eighth grade, I began working in the local general mercantile store, L. Rope, R-O-E-P-E, -E, and Sons. This, sold, this store sold everything but, but meats. It sold clothing, shoes, groceries, so-called dry goods, at a cream station as well as a, an egg reception station. I, I worked after school, before and after school. School was from nine to four. I helped open the school, the store at nine, correction, at seven a.m., worked until nine when, and then went to school until four and after four, worked generally until 9.30 or 10 o'clock at night, as the store had to be open for the conveniences, uh, convenience of farmers who brought their produce there. My du duties were general. They started out uh, uh, candling eggs to see whether they were good or not and then testing cream, and later uh, in all departments of the store. After a while, the store uh, closed uh, on evenings at 6 o'clock, except on Wednesdays and, and Saturday nights, at which time it frequently stayed open until midnight. My salary went into the family coffers to maintain the home. This continued until uh, the summer following my graduation from high school, at which time uh, my mother insisted that I uh, retain my money and uh, in order that I would have some money to go to school on. I saved $100 for that purpose, and that's what I started out to school with the, in September 1927. My mother inspired me to 
uh, go to college as she felt there was no future for me in a small town. What do I remember about uh, my childhood? Well, the, my memory goes back to uh, approximately three years of age when we lived in Dallas, South Dakota. Uh, we had a, a house that had a, uh, a chimney in the center and uh, a flat space of about uh, two feet around the chimney uh, where our dog used to uh, jump on a, a lean-to on the back of the house and go up there and, and sit beside the, beside the chimney because it was warm. I remember the day that my uh, sister was born, my grandmother Penning had come from uh, St. Joe to stay with my mother at the time the baby was born. I recall my uh, father taking me out to walk around the block, and when I got back, uh, I had a, a little sister. I also remember that the 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 uh, town was on, on a, a little hill, and the uh, circus came to town one day, and uh, the uh, wagons came up the hill, and it looked like they disappeared because they, they went, went down on the other side of the hill. At the bottom of the hill there was a, a lumber yard and I recall that that's where we found our dog when uh, the, he apparently got poisoned and went there to die. Of course, uh, all during my childhood and until uh, we moved to Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, the uh, plumbing was outdoors. Uh, we had outdoor privies. And there was no running water. Water had to be pumped from a well. One of the highlights of my childhood was when uh, my father took two weeks vacation and uh, it turned out to be a month because we uh, got stranded by floods. We drove to, we drove in, the air, in our car which uh, was 1911 Ford, Model T. The night, uh, the uh, year was 1924. We didn't acquire a car until uh, about 1923 or 24. The car had uh, uh, open in the front seat and uh, had uh, acetylene gas lamps uh, for lights which you got out and lit uh, as when it was getting dark. We drove the, the car to St. Joe, Missouri. There was only 29 miles of paving in, in the, the whole state of, of uh, Nebraska at that time so that most everything was, was gravel or dirt. It took us two days to drive from Beamer, Nebraska to uh, St. Joe, Missouri. The distance was about 180 miles, as I recall. We stayed in a tourist camp uh, in the car uh, in Fall City, Nebraska uh, at night, and uh, the next night that camp was wiped out by a tornado. Our goal was to visit as many of my uh, father's maternal cousins who lived in a county uh, near Atch Atchison, Kansas. They were mostly farmers and we went from one uh, house to another. Uh, in St. Joe, we either stayed with my Aunt Mary, who was the, had the big house, where all the family were accustomed to congregating, uh, or with my Uncle Matt and Aunt Agnes, who also lived in St. Joe. Uncle Matt and Aunt Agnes did not have any children. 
This trip was in 1924, and I remember it, it as the uh, there was an, a radio at my Aunt Mary's, and I listened to the uh, Democratic National Convention on the radio. This is the famous long convention in which uh, uh, Al Smith and McAdoo uh, were deadlocked for so long. Al Smith was the first Catholic to run for president. When it became time for us to, to return home, we, uh, there had been uh, floods and the uh, road was washed out. It ended up that we were gone a month before we could get, get back to Beamer. Later, uh, one of my friends, an older boy whose father ran a hardware store, Rowan Freed, helped me to uh, study radio, and we uh, built little radio sets and listened to uh, the podcasts from the the Norfolk Daily News at Norfolk, 35 miles from Beamer, and also the Omaha Great Exchange, uh, WAAW, in Omaha. Those were the only two stations available in Nebraska at that time. Rollin Fried and I had the only radios in that area for uh, quite a while, and well, we enjoyed the the uh, experimentation that was possible because it didn't interfere with anybody else's radio. I recall listening uh, to the radio uh, at the time the death of President Harding was was uh, deceased. My grandmother. Knox at that time. Uh, Your mother's mother. My mother's mother were, was listening to with me, and she got all excited and and uh, called to my mother and said, "Carrie, Carrie, Harding's dead." She dropped her H's when she would uh, get excited. The next year, I went to work in the in the uh, mercantile store. And so I didn't have uh, the time to spend on radio after that. Our last time that we moved to uh, was on the side of a hill, and uh, my folks uh, started to buy the house on a loan from the bank. The next year, 1925, was uh, my folks' 25th wedding anniversary, and my uh, father was uh, determined to have a big celebration. I remember the my Aunt Mary and uh, my cousins from, from St. Joe, Missouri came, along with my grandmother Penning, who was still living. I remember it was quite amusing to see how the, the girls turned up their noses uh, at the use of the privy as they were used to indoor plumbing back in St. Joe, Missouri. I know my dad uh, invited everybody that he knew to come for the, the celebration. Uh, he used to make home brew, and this uh, was bottled and uh, was kept cold with wash tubs in which we put ice. This was July 17, 1925. This was the day after my, my birthday. My dad used to uh, uh, get me to tell people that uh, I was born the day before my mother and father were, were married 
because my birthday was the day before their wedding anniversary. My Aunt Mary's husband, Louis Deitch, uh, died in, in the flu epidemic of 1918. At the same time, uh, my cousin Alice, Aunt Mary's daughter, Aunt Mary's daughter uh, lost her husband from the flu epidemic. His name was Lawrence Scanlon. Lawrence Scanlon had a hardware store in St. Joe, and uh, his family still runs that store in St. Joe, Missouri. You might be interested to know that, that uh, where we got our, our milk, the uh, Schultz family, S-C-H-U-L-Z, lived about a block and a half from our uh, home, and we used to go down to the Schultz family and, and get a quart of milk every day. Oh, okay. We used a, a pail uh, that had been a uh, um, syrup pail. It wasn't pasteurized. The, the uh, cow was milked in the barn, and then the the milk was strained through a, pe a clean pillowcase. And of course, Ma Schultz always gave a, a generous uh, quart for her customers. I don't remember what we paid for it, but that quart of milk served uh, uh, all of the, the entire family for, the, for cream, skim milk, etc. Ma Schultz's uh, youngest son, uh, Harry, was in my, my class at school, and we went all through grade and high school together. He now lives out in Oxnard, California. We have uh, managed to keep in touch with Harry uh, and also uh, with Lowell Tell, T-O-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, who still lives in the vicinity of Beamer. He lives at, at Wisner, W-I-S-N-E-R, seven miles from Beamer. We saw each other at the last class reunion uh, when they uh, celebrated the, the 50th anniversary of my high school graduating class. There were only five in my graduating class, which was a, a small class. Ordinarily, there were 12 or 13 in each class. There were, Lowell and I were the only ones at the uh, 50th reunion. The graduating class had consisted of three boys and two girls. I did not participate in athletics in, in high school as I had my a job before and after schools. I did, however, participate in in dramatics. There was a dramatic uh, club that uh, was formed in order to uh, supply uh, uh, actors for the school plays. Usually, they they gave a a senior play and a, and a junior play every year, and uh, when the classes were not large enough, uh, they called on the dramatic club to help out. I enjoyed that very much. College course, uh, uh, the high school course, was college preparatory. There, there was, there were no electives at all. Everybody took manual training for the boys and domestic science for the girls. We learned how to use uh, tools in manual training, and I made a, a desk and a hall tree during my two years of manual training. We had to start out with with uh, the rough boards and work work from there. I always uh, look back on my manual training days as as a plus because it taught me how to, to use a few t tools anyway. The foreign language uh, that uh, was taught in our college preparatory course was Latin. 
Everybody had two years of Latin. This proved to be useful in later years. We had general science, uh, but no physics or chemistry. There was no laboratory available. One year they organized a, uh, a school band, and uh, my folks sent away and got a, a violin for me, uh, hoping that I could take violin lessons. However, it turned out that uh, you, you had to have uh, piano music lessons first, and so I was not able to participate. There were no piano lessons at the school. This was all done by private instruction. And some children were fortunate enough to have that private instruction. I enjoyed my high school very much. Originally, my plans for going to college was to, to uh, go to teacher's college and uh, to teach uh, high school after two years. At that time, you could get a two years teaching certificate for high school. By that time, I thought I wanted to go into medicine and I was going to use my teaching uh, position as a means of getting money to go on to medical school. However, that fell through due to the fact that they changed the requirements and said all accredited high schools had to have degree teachers. In the meantime, I took a civil service exam for a uh, postal clerk or, and carrier in Lincoln, Nebraska. In Lincoln, Nebraska. And my mother had always told me that uh, if I had a chance to get a, take a civil service exam, that I should take it, so I did. At that time, we had to compete with the veterans of, of uh, the First World War, as they were automatically gra granted additional points to their scores by virtue of their veteran status. There were 800 took the civil service exam, and I was number 17 uh, on on the list. The the call for my for me uh, for appointment as a substitute uh, clerk did not come until three years later. At that time, I, I had uh, was I was completing my first year in medical school and had run out of money, so I didn't know how I was going to to continue my medical education. And this came along uh, as an uh, appointment as a substitute clerk, and I stayed out of school uh, and worked summers as, as the, the depression was then coming. coming and the work was there, and, and uh, it seemed like a godsend to have it occur at just that time. I find myself getting ahead of my story. Going back to Beamer, I, uh, it, it was my uh, father and grandmother's language when they wanted to uh, say something that, that the children weren't supposed to hear. Consequently, I was determined that if I ever got a chance to learn German, uh, I would do so. My mother had taken German in high school, and uh, they, uh, I had her, her German book, which I read at various times. After World War I, uh, the, a, a Jewish merchant who had a, a, one of the other mercantile stores in Beamer, uh, had an orphaned uh, nephew brought over from Germany who, who could not speak any English. Since I lived in the neighborhood, uh, he uh, introduced me to this uh, nephew whose name was Carl Fink. It was quite a German community uh, in the vicinity of Beamer, and uh, one heard various amounts of German being used. The only the only uh, uh, German that I uh, was sure of was a sentence from my mother's high school German book, and uh, the uh, 
sentence. But I have lost my ring today. Mein Bruder hat heute einen Ring verloren. When uh, Mr. Meyer introduced me here to his nephew, Carl, uh, I said, Mein Bruder hat heute einen Ring verloren. Of course, the the boy assumed that I, that, that I spoke German, and he wanted to he go help me find my brother's ring. It took a lot of explaining by the uncle before I could get it get over to him that that's all the German that I knew. Later, when I worked in Ropi's store, uh, I picked up quite a bit of, of German construction because the the uh, local German population would speak English with with German. Uh, construction. Later, when I took German in, at the university, it came in very handy because uh, I uh, already knew how to word the German construction. I should have helped out in other ways, too, because in the second year of German, I, I met uh, uh, Mama, who asked me to help her study German. I'll leave that to her to tell you how we study German. Mm -hmm. She invited me out to her home to, to study German, and of course I, uh, I went with my book to, to study German and insisted on doing so. The tuition at the university was very low, and uh, out of my hundred dollars that I had saved, uh, I was able to pay my tuition for the first semester, and uh, after that I got a tuition scholarship which uh, paid my tuition. My mother used to send me boxes of food from home, and I would mail my, my uh, laundry to her, which, meant, which made the room model less. We furnished our own sheets. I tried various jobs in Lincoln to, um, to help out because I was running out of, of money. I first started uh, carrying out garbage from a local a luncheonette in, in a department store for which I got one, one meal. Later on, I, I washed dishes on Saturday and continued to work in this luncheonette, which was a leased department this department store, Golden Company. The, the company uh, who had the lease also had the candy uh, department lease, and so I, I worked for the candy company, continuing in that job until I uh, entered medical school, September 1930. I should mention that before the, the end of my freshman year, my brother joined me to help out with the rent, as I w was not getting get very much in the way of money and was in danger of running out of money. He was a good brother to me and uh, certainly helped me over the rough spots that first year. Frank got a job with a, a uh, grocery store and uh, worked at that until he finally went into the garbage hauling business. My folks uh, sold their home and moved out of, of uh, Beamer to Lincoln, Nebraska because my father's job had been eliminated and there had been a bank failure in the town which made it rough on everybody. Later I was able to help my father get a position as a night watchman at Gold's department store, a position he held until the depression began to be felt and uh, the job was reduced from two men to one and he lost out. After that he had various uh, jobs as a guard for the uh, uh, university and also at the uh, Air Force Base, which was located at Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, here I am again. This is March the 20th, and 
I'm trying to pick up the threads where I last talked on this narrative. I find it a little bit difficult to maintain the sequence of this narrative, and, and I regret that I probably am uh, repeating myself from time to time, but maybe you can disentangle the thread that I am trying to maintain. As I stated before, my uh, purpose in going to uh, the teacher's college was in order to work off my uh, pre-medic requirements, uh, which normally took two years, but uh, I w had intended to uh, work as a teacher and save my money to go to medical school, but the changing of the of the university regard uh, high schools uh, meant that I, I could no longer plan on teaching until after I got a, a degree, and that would make it too long. Since I was working more and more uh, at uh, my job at Golden Company, the uh, science requirements for uh, pre-medic were uh, postponed because of the laboratory involved, which cut into my working time. At one time, I was working 55 hours uh, a week at 25 cents an hour and uh, carrying a full load of university hours. Consequently, uh, my uh, lab courses were kept saved until the last year. I worked off these requirements uh, in the uh, third year of, at the university and uh, finished it in summer school. In a way, it helped me because uh, I could spend more time on the uh, difficult biochemistry courses. And since I had had no chemistry in high school, it was necessary to take, start with basic chemistry and, and complete it. I completed uh, the uh, biochemistry in the summer school of my third year. Since I was not carrying any other subjects, uh, I uh, was fortunate in getting a, a high grade. This all helped me in getting admitted to medical school. In general, I had an A average. I was elected to the uh, Theta Nu Honorary uh, Pre-Medic Fraternity, which more or less automatically guaranteed your admission to the uh, medical school, which was in Omaha. At medical school, the fraternities were always quite interested in scholarship, and so they, uh, quote, rush, unquote, the uh, freshman students that had the uh, high scholastic average. Uh, I could not join any fraternity because I was barely able to make it as, as it was. There were advantages in belonging to fraternities because they had organized study groups and so forth. Uh, many of the lab assistants were uh, fraternity men, and it was helpful to those students. However, there were a group of us that were non-fraternity men who uh, got along all right without the fraternity assistance. I was not an A student my freshman year, but uh, a B. However, in my senior year, I came back to the A group. I was in the high 10 of, high 10 percent of the, my senior class in Edison. That fact helped me in uh, getting selected for uh, an internship at the University Hospital, which was a prize that was sought for by many 
of the graduating class. There are only uh, 100 uh, admissions to the freshman class each year, and there were, would be 11 or 1,200 applications, including many students from other schools. As I think I've mentioned before, uh, uh, I saved enough money to see me through uh, the freshman year at medical school, uh, but going into debt for some $90 that I borrowed from my brother. In the summer following my freshman year, I received my appointment as a substitute uh, mail clerk, and that was the, my salvation. I uh, stayed out of school, out of medical school the next year, and with the uh, savings from that year plus the two summers, I started back to medical school. At that time, the Depression was in full swing. Jobs were at a premium. I saved my money and put it in postal savings, which again was a very fortunate happenstance because when the bank holiday came uh, as a result of the Depression, the postal savings was not affected by the closing of the banks. Many people had money in the bank and, and could not get it because of the, the closing of all the banks. I was able to get a leave of absence from the Postal Service uh, that lasted from September to, uh, to December when I would come back until to work in the Christmas rush when they could always use uh, skilled help and I was by then a trained postal clerk. The postmaster was very kind in giving me leaves of absence. Actually, it meant that the subs that were uh, remaining behind were still that were still working would have uh, more work individually because I would not be there to share in the available work while I was going to school. I would then get another leave of absence from from uh, uh, January until June. Six months was the longest that a leave of absence could be obtained. In June, I would come back and work uh, until September again, being available when the rest of the uh, regular clerks and carriers would be taking vacations, in which, at which time they would need more trained substitute clerks. This arrangement continued for the rest of my medical school. But at the same time, starting in my sophomore year in medical school, uh, one of my friends who had a job in a veterinary laboratory uh, down in the railroad yards, his father was a, a veterinarian at Blair, Nebraska, which was 25 miles from Omaha. This uh, student, Irv Tilden, was, had been in my freshman class, and he stayed out of school the next year uh, in order to work as a laboratory assistant so that when I came back to my sophomore, to start my sophomore year, he uh, was also starting his sophomore year. He had this job in the veterinary lab uh, where it was necessary to for someone to be in the lab at night to take orders for a hog cholera serum from veterinarians in the Omaha uh, trading area. This was kept in a great big refrigerator, walk-in refrigerator, and it was necessary for the night man to take the orders and, and place the uh, serum on a refrigerator car uh, in the railroad yards. In order to do this, uh, uh, the uh, uh, laboratory pr provided a room to sleep with a, a uh, gas burner to cook on and the sum of five dollars per week. My classmate offered to share 
uh, the job with me so that he, he would be able to get away part of the time. Junior and senior years, uh, it was necessary for medical students to take house calls and uh, it would be difficult for him to do so without someone to, to relieve him. We uh, agreed that uh, I would buy the books that we needed for medical school and we would share the five dollars to buy groceries and gas for an old car that uh, Irv had. The lab was three miles from school and while there was streetcar uh, available it was cheaper to uh, buy gas which was six or seven cents a gallon at that time than it was to pay streetcar fare. We were able to buy groceries and gas for the car out of the five dollars money that we received. Also Irv's father who was a veterinarian uh, frequently took in meat uh, from his customers on their bills since nobody had any money and they would bring uh, meat to us and we kept it in the refrigerator where the uh, hog cholera serum was stored. We would buy five pounds of cheese which uh, on sale uh, was 75 cents and we made cheese sandwiches and uh, got a quart of milk which we uh, took with us as our lunch every day at medical school. Even though I had cheese sandwiches every day for a year, I still like cheese. Incidentally, Irv uh, Tilden uh, also served uh, with my intern group at the University of Nebraska, and later uh, he also went to the University of Illinois, uh, specializing first in radiology and then later in, in uh, pathology. In the field of pathology, then he eventually went to uh, Hawaii and settled there. He was there when Pearl Harbor was attacked. He joined the Honolulu Clinic and stayed with them until retiring a couple of years ago. We have continued to maintain our contact with each other. I seem to get off on a tangent, and lo and behold, here I am back in up to 1981 again. So it's necessary for me to back up again to go on to medical school. My association with Irv Tilden uh, in itself would probably take up a volume. Needless to say, uh, I cannot maintain the continuity if I get off on too many tangents. I'm afraid the subject of uh, the subject of our romance will have to be covered mostly by Mama as I get off on too many tangents. I think you have the picture now, the, the medical school was financed primarily by uh, returns from my post office job which I maintained until I graduated from medical school. Plus, plus the job at the Allied Laboratories in Omaha, which really was Irv Tilden's job, but which he shared with me. Upon graduating from medical school, I applied for and received a, a first lieutenant's commission in the Reserve Corps of the United States Army, the headquarters for which was in Omaha, that is the Seventh Corps area. Since interns uh, were ordinarily not paid, we received $25 per month at the University of Nebraska. We also received two weeks vacation during the year's internship, and by virtue of my having a Reserve Commission, I could apply for active duty for two weeks, which I did at, at Fort Crook at Omaha, and received the full pay and allowances for uh, First Lieutenant's 
in the Army. This mounted to about $166, which was a great help to our bank account. Later in the year, I applied for uh, duty with the Civilian Conservation Corps and was sent to Knife River, Minnesota, where the uh, CCC was working on uh, roads and forestry. By that time, I was a married man and had one son, Larry. That commission, which I maintained until uh, 1939 or 40, was the basis of my entry into World War II. When war seemed to be imminent, uh, doctors were, were uh, called upon under what was called procurement and assignment. Uh, everyone under 45 years of age uh, was invited to enter the, mil the Army of the United States, and commissions were handed out right and left. Under this program, uh, no one under 45 was to be permitted to stay at home unless uh, they were delegated as essential to the community. However, having had uh, a reserve commission, this was, was simply reactivated and I was, I went on active duty as a first lieutenant when if I had not had previous military service, I probably would have had a captaincy at that time. Most all reserve officers were in the same boat. I find myself uh, constantly getting ahead of my story, so that I'm afraid it'll be rather difficult to piece together. The whole subject of um, uh, our courtship and marriage uh, have, have uh, set aside uh, primarily for a moment to elaborate on, but there are some aspects of it that uh, necessitate my bringing it in, as it dovetails with my medical education. I really think it would be better if it were the subject of a separate tape. I should say that we were married uh, during the Thanksgiving vacation in 19... 33, and Larry was born the following year, uh, October 20th, 1934. I bring this in now because it relates more to my medical education, and uh, I realize it, it is uh, out of sequence. But when Mama was carrying Larry, the, she developed uh, a toxemia pregnancy, which her own mother had developed with her first pregnancy, and which later uh, Annie Mickey did the same thing. This had a great deal to do with my decision to go into obstetrics because where we were desirous of having a, a, a large family, and uh, if I could not learn to manage the pregnancy uh, better than was available at that time, uh, we would have been in serious trouble. Uh, when Larry was two months old, he uh, developed a, a growth tumor on his forehead. This was removed by the family doctor and then I took the slides up to the medical school to have them examined by the pathologist there. One of the pathologists uh, said it was uh, the, a uh, sarcoma, which would be the uh, worst form of, of uh, cancer. The younger pathologist, however, said it was a hemangioblastoma, which uh, would be subject to treatment while it was still in its local area. The, the tumor re returned after one, after one month after it was removed. And so uh, I arranged to bring Larry up to the university and have the 
tumor treated with radium. This was done, uh, and the uh, subsequent events showed that it was uh, not a true sarcoma, but a hemangioblastoma. But uh, the location on his forehead made it difficult to treat with radium. However, this was undertaken and uh, successfully completed. At the time, there was danger that the uh, suture lines of the, of the skull would, would grow together and deform his, his skull, and also that he would, would develop cataracts in his, his eyes due to the, due to the radium. However, uh, God was with us, and neither one of these things occurred. He had quite a, a scar left from the radiation, and it was a, we were advised to wait until he uh, had passed puberty before uh, trying to do use plastic surgery to to uh, eliminate the scar. There was a doctor in St. Louis who had been recommended to us as uh, 